The price of your time's not a price that you're willing to pay. You cry in your tea which you hurl at your screen as you see me go by. Why so sad? Remember we made an arrangement when we went away. Now you're making me mad. Remember despite isolation, I'm your man. You'll be back soon, you see. You'll remember you behave for me. You'll be back, time will tell. You'll remember that I've taught you well. Taking tests, massive fails. We have seen each other through it all. And when push comes to shove, I will set a form athletics just to remind you of my job. Da 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 Complaining when I am gone And no, don't change the subject Maths Cause you're my favourite subject Maths My most exciting subject Maths My only special subject Maths Forever And ever And ever and ever and ever You'll be back like before We will do the maths but in the school But for now we're stuck inside Doing maths online for many days Stuck at home I'll go mad Sick of watching news on career Cause when push comes to shove I will load you up with work to justify my job. La da 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 And now for another episode of Talking Maths. Here's your host, Mr. Metalman. Alright guys, we're going to do some factorising now. Last week we did expanding, which is the opposite. So when you add something... Whoops, I want my pen, not my rubber. When you add something, the opposite of that is to minus it. When you time something, the opposite of that is to divide it. When you expand something, the opposite is factorising. So just a quick refresher on expanding. If I had two x plus 4 in brackets like that, and I wanted to expand it, we'd get 2x plus 8. So what we're doing is trying to work out how do we go from here back up to there. Okay, so how do we factor things? So for a start, let's just look at some basic numbers. Um, if I had asked you what are the factors of 20, um, what numbers are multiplied to make 20, we'd know for a start that 20 and 1 get multiplied together. Let's call it 1 and 20. 1 and 20. Okay, so they are factors. Then we go up by 1. 2. 2 goes into it 10 times. 3 doesn't go into it. 4 goes into it 5 times. 5 goes into it 4 times. And you'll notice we've started to repeat. So once you start repeating, you can stop. So these are the 6 factors of 20. Okay, if I had the number 20 and the number 16, and I said to you, what is the highest common factor of those two numbers? And we knew that these were the numbers for 20. And the factors for 16 are six, 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 3 doesn't go into it, and 4 and 4. So we don't need to repeat a number. 
So they're the common factors for 16 over here. What is the highest common factor? We look at these two numbers here. What have we got? We've got 20. Is 20 over here? It's not. Uh, the next lowest number is 16. 16 is not in both. 10 is not in both. 8 is not in both. 5 is not in both. And then we've got 4, and it's in both. So 4 is the highest common factor here. Okay, so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about highest common factor. Looking at two numbers, what are their factors, and what is the highest common factor? So the first question, and I'll get you to have a go, I'll explain how to do these two, um, then I'll get you guys to have a go in your book. Um, pause this video straight after, and once you've done that, um, unpause the video and watch me do question two, and then you can have a go at that. So this one's just numbers for a start, so it shouldn't be too hard, but they're, they're high. The, the trick to this is to look at the two numbers. So we've got 35, that's not negative, it's just saying 35 and, 385 and 35. So we've got 385 and 35. We look at the lowest number. It's 35, okay? 35 is our key number here. What are the factors of 35? Well, we know that 1 and 35 is because 1 in itself always is. 2 doesn't go into it, 3 doesn't go into it, 4 doesn't go into it, 5 goes into it 7 times, 6 doesn't go into it, and 7 goes into it 5 times, and we're repeating numbers, so we stop. They are the four factors of 35. So what we want to do is start with the biggest factor and see if it goes into 385. So does 35 go into 385? And we do 385 divided by 35, and it does. It goes into it 11 times. If it didn't, it would come up with a decimal or a fraction, so we know that that's correct. So we know that 35 is the highest common factor for both. Okay, so we can say that 35 is the highest common factor for this question. Um, for the next one, we've got two biggish numbers, but we've just got to know common factors of 66. We don't need to worry about 1,089. So for 66, the common factors are 1 and 66, 2 and 33, 3 and 22, 4 doesn't go into it, 5 doesn't go into it, 6 goes into it 11 times, 7 doesn't, 8 doesn't, 9 doesn't, 10 doesn't, 11 goes into it 6 times, and we're repeating, so we stop. Now we look at these biggest numbers. 1,089 is an odd number, so an even number cannot go into it. So we know that it can't be 66. Our next biggest is 33. So we go back to the calculator, which for some reason I closed, um, and we're trying to do, does... 1089 does 33 go into it so we divide it by 33 if this is a, f a whole number and it goes into it 33 times so we know that the number 33 is the highest common factor for those two so that's all we're trying to do find the highest common factor for the two so 33 there so that's how we do that pause that have a go at question one and unpause it and come back and have a go at question two I hope things went well in pause land um, we're now on question two. Again, we're looking for highest common factors. Um, we've got two numbers here, except now we've got some algebra. We've got 8g to the 2, y, and 28g, y squared. Again, this is not a minus. This is just the two numbers. I wish they didn't put that there. Anywho, um, what is the highest common factor? Um, let's have a look at that. 20, or 8 and 28. So if we've got the number 8, Um, that's our lowest number of 8 and 28. Sorry, I was just my mind was elsewhere for a second there. 8 is our lowest number between those two. Factors of 8 are 1 and 8, 2 and 4, because then we start repeating after that. So of 28, 8 doesn't go into it. 4 does go into it. So we know that 4 is the highest common factor. Now we're on to um, algebra. We've got letters here. So let's just pause for a sec. I'm going to make this red because I'm about to delete it. Just ignore everything for a second. If I have g to the 6, for example, that is the same thing as g times g times g times g times g times g. Times g. Okay, that's g to the 6. We know that if we have g times g, it's g to the 2. g times g times g is g to the 3, it, based on how many we've got. So the factors of g to the 6, for example, would be g to the 6, g to the 5, because g to the 5 is times by g to the 1 to make g to the 6, g to the 4 is times by g to the 2, g to the 3 is times by g to the 3. So basically it's all the numbers lower. Okay? So factors of g to the 6 would be g to the 6, g to the 5, g to the 4, g to the 3, g to the 2, g to the 1, 
and also 1 because anything times by itself so for example g to the 6 times 1 would equal g to the 6 so anything times itself is a factor when you're doing algebra it's all the indices back towards 1 so if it was g to the million it would be g to the million g to the 999,999 g to the 999,998 all the way down to 1 they are the common factors we do here so do, do both of these numbers have g's in them? They do. Which one is lower? g or g to the 2? Well, it's g. And y and y to the 2, which one is lower? It's y. So that's the highest common factor because g to the 2 is not, or y to the 2 is not common to y, so it has to be the lower letter. They are your highest common factor, 4gy. That's setting us up to do something else. Um, which we're going to see soon, but all we're doing for now is listing highest common factors. So we'll do the second one here as an example as well. Um, we've got 9 and 33, so we want to focus on the smaller number, which is 9. Um, common factors for 9 are 9 and 1, 3 and 3, so we're repeating. Um, that's it, 1, 9 and 3. 9 doesn't go into 33, 3 does, so it's going to be 3. H is in both. V and R aren't, so that's our highest common factor, because V and R are not common in both. So pause the video again, have a go at that, and then we'll meet you at question three. Okay, now we've established how to find highest common factors, we're actually going to start factorising. Next class we're going to be factorising more challenging ones. For a start, we're just going to do some basic ones. What we need to do is look at the two um, things within our two terms within our expression, and we've got a 5w and a 45. So we look at the lower number, which is the 5, and we want to do common factors, or factors. So 5 and 1, 2 doesn't go into it, 3 doesn't go into it, and then we're back to 1 and 5. So that's it, 5 and 1. Does the 5, which is higher, go into 45? It does. So our largest common factor here is 5. Then we have a w now. Is there a W in this? There's not. So W is not common. So what we now do is we, we write that number down and we open some brackets. And what we're going to do is divide this term and this term both by 5. So 5W divided by 5 is W. Or you could do 1W because it's 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Plus 45 divided by 5, which is 9. So if I was to get... If I was to go from here, this is our answer. Okay, that's all you've got to do. But if I was to expand those brackets, 5w, oh sorry, um, plus 45, it'll actually get me back to what the question was. So that is um, why it's the opposite, because we're doing the opposite thing we did last class. Uh, next question there, 4t plus 8. Look at the two terms, what's common? They both have numbers, they don't both have letters, so the the letter is not going to be a, a common factor. So 4t plus 8. So we're going to look at the number 4. Factors of 4 are 1, 2 and 4. Um, what's the highest that fits into 8? It's going to be the number 8. So we're going to have 4 out the front. We're going to divide 4 into both of these two terms now. 4t, it's going to be 1t or just t. And that could have been just w over here as well. But we've got t and then 8 divided by 4 is 2. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, so 4 and t plus 2. So that's all we've got to do today. Tomorrow we're going to do things where we might have a t there or a t squared here, and then we're going to work out how we go about factorising it. Kind of like we did up here, this was the starting point to those questions. So if we look at uh, this one here, this 3h, um, what we look at doing there is dividing the 3h into both terms. So we would open a bracket, um, 3 it goes into 9 3 times, the H goes in, it wipes out the H, the V is there, left over, and we've got, um, now imagine that was a plus, because that shouldn't, it's not a minus, it's just an, a hyphen. Then we've got 33, it goes into a 3 11 times, the H gets wiped out because it's in both, and we're left with R. So now if I was to times that out, it would get us back to what that was. So that's what we're looking at tomorrow. Like I said, for that question, you didn't need to go that far. Um, so have a go at those questions. Um, I'll be in Google Meets if you need me. Um, sing out if you need any help.